Well, good morning, grade nines, or good afternoon. Um, we're going to take over where we left off on your last note. So open your notes to part two, adding and subtracting polynomials. And um, let's take a look. It says sometimes we we'll want to add two simplified polynomials together. So remember, a polynomial is just a group of terms that have been connected by pluses or minuses. And these are two different polynomials. We know they're two different polynomials because I've used brackets. And they're simplified because there's nothing inside each bracket individually that can go together. Remember what like terms are, what we learned like terms were last week. Like terms are two terms that have the same variables with the same coefficient or with, with the same exponents, excuse me. Um, and so there are no variables that repeat themselves in each bracket. So if I want to add these two polynomials together, the easiest thing that I can do, these brackets really aren't doing anything. Um, so I can just remove the brackets and collect the like terms. So once I remove the brackets, they just become a single polynomial uh, that hasn't been simplified yet. So we're just going to pull the brackets off. 2x squared plus 7x minus 20. And then when I remove this bracket, I'm going to get rid of this double sign. So add and subtract makes just a subtract. x squared minus 5x minus 3. And now we just simplify. So I have a 2x squared and a negative x squared. That gives me just x squared. I have a positive 7x and a negative 5x. So 7 subtract 5 is 2, positive 2, so plus 2x. And then the two constant terms on the end, negative 20 and negative 3, make negative 23. And that's all there really is to it. Let's do the next one. I'm going to remove the brackets, and I get 8x squared minus 4x plus 9 plus 12x squared plus 6x. And then when I put these things together, I've got an 8x squared and a 12x squared, which gives me 20x squared and a negative 4x and a positive 6x together gives me plus 2x. And then there's only the constant term on the end, which gives me plus 9. OK, I hope that makes sense. I just want to make one comment here about the way I wrote this down. When you just have x's in a polynomial, and most of the time we are just going to have x's in a polynomial, we aren't going to have any other variables. Um, so when you have one variable, and this counts whether it's x's or anything else, but just one variable, um, always go from highest to lowest exponent. And the lowest exponent is the one that's not there at all. So when you have no, or when you have the constant term, that's the last thing that you should put. So in proper form, in proper form, exponents, are stated from biggest to smallest. Now, if you don't put them in this order, it's not the end of the world. Um, but if you want to get that 4 plus on a question, you need to have them in the proper order and have them written properly. So now let's take a look at this one. It says, example five, what is the perimeter of the following rectangle? Now, perimeter means to go all the way around the, um, the outside of the shape. So perimeter is add all sides. Now that's going to be four polynomials because each side is its own polynomial. So that's x plus 8 plus 2x plus minus 6 plus x plus 8 
uh, plus 2x minus 6. Now these brackets are not important when it's all pluses between them. When they're minuses, it is kind of important, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but we need to take the brackets off, um, which aren't doing anything. So we'll have x plus 8 plus 2x minus 6 plus x plus 8 plus 2x minus 6. Now let's add them all up. Um, so there's an x, there's an x, there's an x, and there's an x. So we've got 2, 4, 5, 6 x's when we add them all up. And then when we take a look at the constant terms, um, I'm going to group them together here. 8 and negative 6 is going to give me positive 2, and then this 8 and negative 6 is going to give me positive 2, so we just have plus 4 in the end. Now part B involves um, the subbing into the simplified expression. So that involves the work from the day before fr um, Friday where we have to know what that means. Use your answer from part A to find the perimeter if x equals 5. So if x equals 5, I have to plug x into my simplified expression. So instead of an x, I'm going to put a bracket with a 5 and then add 4. And 6 times 5 is 30, plus 4 is 34. Make sure you follow order of operations. And there's no units here, so there's no units down here. Now this next one is a little bit of a guessing game. It says, can you find two polynomials whose sum is 4x squared minus 9x? Okay, so I want two polynomials to add together to be 4x squared and negative 9x. So I need two terms that are going to give me 4x squared. Um, well, the first things that come to mind for me are a 2x squared and a 2x squared. And then negative 9x. Hmm, negative 9x. Well, if I have a negative 10x, what do I need to put with a negative 10 to get a negative 9? Well, I just need 1x. So if I have plus x over here, then that's going to give me negative 9. So a 2x and a 2x combine to give me 4x squared, and a negative 10 and a positive 1 combine to give me negative 9. So those two polynomials... will equal 4x squared minus 9x. But those aren't the only two polynomials. Um, we can, if I have 4x squared, I could say um, 10x squared and negative 6x squared. Those two things go together to give me, um, to give me a positive 4. And for 9x squared, negative 9x squared, I could have two negatives that go together to give me 9, uh, like negative 5x and negative 4x. Those two things will go together to make negative 9. Um, so then all I have to do is put brackets around them and put a plus between them. And I know that those two polynomials give me 4x squared minus 9x. Um, you might want to pause this now and see if you can come up with two more um, polynomials on your own that add up to 4x squared minus 9. I'm going to carry on with this lesson. And we're going to remember about subtracting integers. So when you remember when you subtract integers, the signs change. So when I have subtract a negative 3, that changes to a positive 3, two negatives side by side make a positive. And when I subtract a positive, those signs are different, so that changes to 5 minus 3. So notice that um, this sign was a negative, and now there's a positive, and this sign here was a positive, and it's now a negative. So these negatives out front, a subtraction, changes signs. The sign you end up with is the opposite of what was in the bracket. 
And subtracting polynomials is similar because we have to subtract. This subtraction means changing each one of these individually. Last time when we were adding, we were adding each one of them individually, but adding doesn't change signs, so the brackets really weren't doing anything. This time the brackets are doing something, so I have to deal with that. So this says remove the brackets, change all the signs in the bracket following the minus, and then collect like terms. So anytime you have a subtraction in front of brackets, it's going to change all the signs inside. So if we're taking a look at this one, the first bracket doesn't have a minus out front, so we can just take that off. But now we have to think of this, I'm subtracting 5x, so subtract 5x. And I'm subtracting positive 4, well a negative and a positive when we get rid of the double signs is a minus. So really, all you have to remember is that whatever the sign was in the brackets before, this was a positive 5x, it's now going to be a negative 5x. This was a positive 4, it's now going to be a negative 4. And then we have a negative 2 and a negative 5 together gives us negative 7x, and a negative 3 and a negative 4 together give us negative 7. And remember, we can't go any further because these two things are not like terms, so they cannot be put together. So we'll do the same thing here. I'm not going to go um, into as much detail when I take off the signs, or take off the brackets, sorry. Um, so we're going to take off these brackets. And now I'm going to take off these ones, but since this minus is here, this changes all signs. Changes all signs. So this was a positive. I'm ignoring this right now. This was a positive. It's now negative 7x squared. This was a negative. It's now plus 5x. This was a plus. It's now minus 3. And now I just have to collect like terms. So I've got a minus 2x squared and a minus 7x squared gives me minus 9x squared. A plus 6x and a plus 5x give me plus 11x. And a negative 3, put three bender lines on it, and a negative 3 gives me negative 6. And there's nothing more I can do because x squared is different than x, which is different than a constant term. And unless I give you something to stick in for x, we're done. So now down here it says when two polynomials are subtracted, the answer is this, what might have been the polynomial. So this is the same as what we did with adding, except it's a little bit harder. So here's my thinking for this one. I need two things that go together to give me 3x squared. So 3, um, not 3, sorry, 2. 2x two squared and x squared. And I need two things that go together to give me 6x. So plus 4x and plus 2x. And I need two things that go together to give me negative 8. So negative 6 and negative 4. Okay, now I could just add these two things together. I could just stick brackets around it and add them up, except that I want to subtract them. So these two things would add together to be that. Well, what two things subtract? Well, going backwards, if I want to change this to a minus, I'm going to have to change all of those signs. So I'm just going to do that now. I'm going to change that in the middle to a minus, which means that these signs have to change. And these are two polynomials that when you subtract them, you get that up there. So it's easier to do the add first, and then just know that if you want that to be a subtract in there, you're going to have to change the signs in the bracket that comes after the subtraction. So you might want to pause the video now and give that a try. Um, oh, and that brings us to part three, which I'm not going to do today. So we'll just leave it at that.
you can go on and um, do the second page um, of your homework for this. Um, remember it says at the top, it has this up at the top and it will say part two. Um, and it just comes after the part one homework that you did for Friday. If you don't have the part one homework done or you don't have from the homework from lesson one done, you need to get that done today as well. Hopefully that works and I hope to see you tomorrow.